In today's video, we're looking at should I be providing online or e-design services in my interior design business? And this is a good question because not everyone should be. Um, because typically uh, an e-design service is, you know, it's a low cost service unless you probably find a way of um, selling quantity or making it a real efficient kind of um, high sale with a quick turnaround. Um, but a lot of people don't know how to do that. So um, it really isn't for everybody. Um, who is it really good for? Yes, well, typically startups. Um, I would say anyone who uh, uh, has um, or who is learning interior design, e-design is really great because it's low risk. So it's that's the kind of service you would want to start off with, actually, because, um, you know, you typically the kinds of services that you can provide on um, an online service or an e-service is, you know, the consulting kind of services. They're more design services. Um, <clears throat> you know, typically things like visualizing, drawing, drafting, uh, specification writing, um, even online sourcing or finding um, online suppliers or shopping lists. What else? Um, submitting applications, building regs or planning or historic building applications. These kinds of things are, um, you know, uh, you can do from home, but, um, you know, they're like more, they're not on site kind of things that you could, um, you should be, you know, you, know, you can't project manage you know, uh, from, from home. You, you typically have to be on site. Um, at least once a week to be able to provide that service um, and to monitor work. Um, you know, there are ways of doing it, but um, there's always a time when, um, you know, it doesn't become e-design anymore. It's actually, um, uh, it's an on-site role. So, uh, you know, your level of experience could um, take the, the, you know, the quality of that e-design service to the next level. So, for example, um, most people who are startups would start off typically with design and maybe sourcing services that are e-design um, because they're uh, all like online sourcing, so not physically going and in, installing into the property, but um, that could be an upsell or something that you could provide as an additional service. But in terms of a specific e-design service, obviously that would be an extra. Um, the way I commanded higher rates for my e-design services was because I had those skills that commanded or well, that my clients saw more value in. And um, they were things like specification writing or doing construction drawings, um, uh, planning drawings, building regulation drawings, um, detailed drawings, um, furniture design, what else? historic building applications. Uh, and, you know, typically those, um, you know, like highly skilled um, specific services that uh, that you need a specialist for. Um, but typically, you know, most people will be um, uh, not asking a typical interior designer for documentation or construction documentation um, information that is more for architecture or those you know interior designers or um, who come from a technical background or um, a, you know engineering background or who have the skills to be able to provide that kind of service um, most e-design you know most people who when they think of e-design uh, they're probably going to be doing you know a design scheme for a room um, choosing furniture for that um, and potentially um, designing bespoke pieces of furniture. I think that is um, very um, viable. Space planning. Um, yeah, and also providing a, a direction potentially for the client in terms of their project procurement method. So um, helping them decide on what, how their project will run and what the steps are of, um, to take it forward. And, you know, obviously, as an interior designer, you could provide an additional service to say, well, if you want me now, after I've finished my e-design, as that's one kind of package, I could kind of, well, you would upsell the, the other package, which would be you doing the physical um, running of the project. So if that sounds like something you can handle, because not everyone is ready for that. So you can see that... Um, 
you know, the design itself, you could probably, um, there's, you know, especially if you're, um, depends on your skill level uh, or where uh, where you start out at. I think as a, you know, if you if you are a startup and you're, you know, growing your skills with the design, you probably will just start with like, you know, one bedroom designs, which is very legitimate um, and uh, worthy e-design service, but know that, you know, there's only so much people are going to pay for that service because, you know, the value associated with uh, one bedroom design, um, you know, typically, um, just in my experience and knowing the scale and caliber of client, you know, some people aren't willing to pay a certain amount for, um, somebody, I mean, somebody is not going to pay you 10,000 pounds or dollars. Um, if they're never going to meet you, <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of money to, uh, risk, um, uh, on an e-design. Um, obviously I've received those kinds of figures, but the the, well, the value of the service I was providing was not just a design, if that makes sense. It was, you know, a lot more phases of a project. So we started off with just an e-design, but then obviously what happened um, afterwards is once they got to know me, we could um, carry on um, working together. So, um, uh, but also the way that I conducted my e-designs allowed for that relationship to grow, if that makes sense. So, um, plus I was capable of adding the additional skills. So you need to kind of see what makes sense for your specific business and um, see what you're capable of providing as an e-design service. So should, should you be creating e-design services? I think most businesses have the capacity to um, most interior design businesses have the capacity, especially if you're a small business, to provide an e-design service, um, but it may not be the most profitable way um, to work. So um, this is where I would consider, I would say if you're a startup um, and you're, you know, you've only been in business, you know, maybe up to a year or so, or if you're not a very experienced designer, you'd like to get a little bit more confident and get more skills, then yes, that is where I would say e-design is really, really great. Um, I suppose also if you're if you've got a, a sourcing based business and um, you're you know you've got a team who, or you're working with specific manufacturers who can um, provide uh you know high return in terms of um you know the trade relationship that you're making with those furniture suppliers so you 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 know you're doing a design scheme but using your suppliers who are um, giving you a good trade discount on those items so when your client purchases those items you're getting um a, a good fee not only in addition or well, in addition to the the design fee that you're getting so um you could be getting uh um like an affiliate fee for um, recommending that client or the, those furniture suppliers. Um, that, you know, that is another, you know, and you wouldn't have to be a startup at that stage because that um, potentially by that stage you're, you've, you would need more than one person working with you in many cases to um, kind of, um, well, you'd have the shop as well. So it, you'd have a, a few different kind of relationships going. Oh, what else? Um, I think as an interior designer, the startup, uh, whether you provide an e-design service and whether it's actually a lucrative service are uh, uh, where you have to draw the line. Because um, if you're getting something back from that service, so you're actually upselling to another um, product, um, outsourcing or um, getting an affiliate rate, or um, uh, like in my case, uh, yeah, uh, uh, taking the project to a different level and being able to um, project manager and um, take the project through from start to finish, um, then this can be, um, you know, quite a, a lucrative way of, um, um, you know, transferring a client into um, a more profitable client, for example, rather than, um, you know, you may, if you're, if you've got, for example, a, a consultation kind of e-design service, you would need quite a few of those because typically a consultation is where you solve a problem or, or one or two things within a short period of time. 
and there's only so much value that a client might see in that so um you know i think i reached a, a level where um you know i i kept on putting up my prices for my consultation services to a point where people just didn't see the value anymore so um you know there comes a point where uh uh, you know, for, you know, for that specific interior design service, people just were like, I see the value, but I, I, we're just not willing to spend that kind of money um, because, um, you know, the project, you know, we're only spending £25,000 on this. And so, we you know, just for some advice, we don't want to spend 5 k for that, for example. So um, making sure that it is a profitable service um, unless you're getting something back or getting money elsewhere, um, you know, because you don't want to be uh, providing too much um, in an e-design, which often I see quite a lot of people doing is they provide so much in their e-design service, it's like you're working for nothing. Um, so you're not actually making that money back or it's not benefiting you in another way. Um, and again, the effort in trying to find repeat clients for a low cost service such as e-design or a consultation e-design kind of um, service is, you know, there's a lot of marketing effort that has to go into trying to get those leads um, and converting a client. So um, unless that's automated or you already have an efficient way of selling that service or um, uh, that that kind of um, e-design, it's, uh, it's going to take a lot of resources to get that really to become profitable or not take up too much time because you'll be spending half the time marketing to get, you know, 20 clients a month um, to make the kind of money that you want um, to, you know, uh, make that e-design service or um, online service profitable. So that's where I would consider what the service is, how much it is, whether how much time it's going to take you because the time it takes for each e-design especially if it's a local service is where um if it doesn't start to get you know especially if you're learning and it doesn't start to get more efficient um uh, you've got to start thinking whether this is the right kind of service for you or whether you can you know make it shorter so take things out maybe um see what you can do with the price to still make it sellable so add value in a different way that um, the client can still see the value but may not require you to do physical drawings, for example, or um, uh, have to source or something, which takes a lot of time. Um, and then take it to um, and see whether you uh, can change those services into something that becomes a bit more profitable for you. So hopefully that answers your question or at least gives you the guidance to start thinking about the questions you should be asking yourself whether an e-design or an online service is right for you because it really isn't right for everybody. I stopped providing e-services um, about two years ago now. Um, it, it just started to not become a profitable thing for me. So I was starting to earn a lot more money with my other services and so I just um, cut off the e-design because um, kind of effort every client onboarding experience takes um, uh, and you know even uh, for the amount of money that I was commanding um, it still wasn't worth it so um, I just found that um, I didn't want my business to become a, a, like you know a high turnover e-design kind of business you might so um, depending on what your goals are for your business, have a look at the direction you want to um, take with that. For me, I, I had lost my passion um, for providing that kind of service to those kinds of clients and I could I kind of outgrew it in a way. I was ready to now um, you know, work on different types of projects that were bringing me much more joy than those initial e-designs, which I started my business doing. Um, and they were the lifeblood of my business at the beginning. And this is why I'm really passionate about e-design and why I teach it to startups, because I think it is, um, for many people at the startup phase, a very, very um, useful way of um, creating a service, getting experience, growing your confidence and um, understanding what people will pay for and then adding value, um, upselling or downselling and then um, understanding business, really. So... Um, yeah, hopefully that uh, gives you the right direction for yourself to um, be able to make a decision.
on uh, whether you want to provide e-design services.